ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله واحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار اما بعد All praise is due to Allah. Brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with many blessings. Many blessings. So many blessings, in fact, that if you tried to count them, you wouldn't be able to. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَإِن تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْصُوهَا if you tried to count the blessings and favors that Allah has bestowed on you, you would not be able to. And no doubt from the greatest blessings that all of us are blessed with right now, all of us, every single one of us is the blessing of life. The blessing of life. This gift that all of us in this masjid and all of us in this town have right with us right now is the blessing of life. One of the greatest blessings, brothers and sisters, is that we are alive right now. You didn't create yourselves. You didn't bring yourselves into existence. And nothing didn't create you, as some people say. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, أَمْ خُلِقُوا مِنْ غَيْرِ شَيْءٍ أَمْ هُمُ الْخَالِقُونَ Were they created from nothing? Or did they create themselves? Of course. You're, you're not created from nothing. How can nothing create anything? Nothing is nothing. And you didn't create yourself. You didn't bring yourself into existence. Rather, you were brought into existence by your creator. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says, كَيْفَ تَكْفُرُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَكُنْتُمْ أَمْوَاتًا فَأَحْيَاكُمْ How can you disbelieve in Allah whilst you were dead and then he gave you life? You were nothing, and then you were brought into existence. And this life, although it is a great gift, it is also a great responsibility. Responsibility for all of us to do it in the right way. Responsibility to carry out our lives in the best possible way. The Prophet wasallam said, No one's feet will move on judgment day. Until they are asked about four things. How they spent their life. What they did with the knowledge they had. How they earned their money. And what they spent that money on. And how they wore their bodies out. Authentic hadith reported by Imam Al-Tirmidhi. Question number one. An umurihi fi ma'afna. No one's feet will move on the Day of Judgment until they are asked how they spent their life. How do we spend our lives? Think about your life from the beginning of it up until this point. How have we been spending our lives? Have we spent our lives in the obedience of Allah? Or have we spent it in the disobedience of Allah? How have we spent our seconds and our minutes and our hours and our days and our months and our years? How much time have we wasted on social media? Maybe scrolling and scrolling like a zombie. Scrolling and scrolling. 
not knowing what you're doing, but time is passing. Second, that the seconds become minutes and the minutes become hours and the hours become days and the days become months and the months become years. And before you know it, you've wasted a lot of your life looking at your phone, scrolling through social media. Perhaps you binge watch, too much binge watching, season after season, series after series, episode after episode. And before you know it, you've wasted how many hours of your life? And I think we're all guilty of this. May Allah rectify our situation. Have you spent your life in the right way? Question number two. عن علمه في مفعل What did the person do with the knowledge they had? We learn from this, brothers and sisters, that it's the purpose of Islamic knowledge is to apply it in your life. عن علمه في مفعل What they did with the knowledge they had, not how much they know, not how much they knew, but what they did with the knowledge that they had. Because if you don't act on the knowledge of Islam that you had, then that knowledge is now of no benefit to you and it's of harm to you. And it's a proof against you and will be a proof against you on the day of judgment. The Prophet wasallam said, وَالْقُرْآنُ حُجَّةٌ لَكَ أَوْ عَلَيْكَ the Qur'an is a proof for you or against you. The Qur'an is a proof for you or against you. And this does not apply simply to students of knowledge or scholars. No, it applies to anyone who knows anything about Islam. All of us know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-raqib, the all-watching. All of us know that Allah is ma'ana aynama kunna, with us wherever we are. Yet we sin openly and we sin in private, continuously. All of us know that Allah is as samir Allah is the all-hearing. Like Aisha radiallahu anha said, Subhanalladhi wasi'a sam'uhu al-aswat. Glorified is the one whose hearing has encompassed all sounds and all voices. We know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is as samir the all-hearing. Yet we speak ill of one another. We insult one another. We criticize one another in the wrong way and unjustly. And maybe we sit around socializing and we let our tongues loose and we backbite each other and so on and so on. <clears throat> we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al-Alim. We know that Allah is the all-knowing. Yet we might do actions in the name of Islam but we are not doing it for Allah. Rather we are doing it because of other people and what they may think of us. So we do it for the people and we don't do it for Allah. Despite the fact that Allah knows that. We also know, <clears throat> now we know that Allah is Al-Alim. So Allah knows what's in our hearts, what we harbor in our hearts from malice and hatred and envy and jealousy and so on. Question number three. عَنْ مَالِهِ مِنْ أَيْنَ اكْتَسَبَهُ وَفِيمَ أَنْفَقَ A person will be asked, يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ Question number three about their money, how they earned it and how they spent it, how they earned it. Are we earning our money in a halal and honorable way? Do we have jobs? Oh brothers, those of you who are able to work, do we have jobs or are we signing on and asking people and begging people for money? Are you earning your money in an illegitimate way, in a haram way? Perhaps you're earning your money in dubious and suspicious and doubtful ways. You don't really know if it's halal or haram. Maybe that side hustle that you're doing, you're not really sure if it's halal or haram, but you're just doing it because everyone else is doing it. What about that investment you're making? The Prophet said, إِنَّ الْحَلَالَ بَيِّنْ وَإِنَّ الْحَرَامَ بَيِّنْ وَبَيْنُهُمَا مُشْتَبِهَاتٌ لَا يَعْلَمُهُنَّ كَثِيرٌ مِّنَ النَّاسِ فمن اتقى الشبهات استبرا لدينه وعرضه ومن وقع في الشبهات وقع في الحرام The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the halal is clear everyone knows what halal is and the haram is clear everyone knows what haram things are وبينهما مشتبهات but between them are issues and things which are not clear so whoever stays away from these unclear things, then they have cleared themselves with regards to their honor 
and their religion. But whoever falls into these things has fallen into the unlawful, the haram, the hadith. Question, <clears throat> and if you have earned your money in the right way, if you've earned your money in the right way, then how do you spend your money? Are you spending it on the right things? Are you wasting your money on pointless things, things that are of no benefit? Maybe you are even purchasing haram products for yourself or for your family and your children. Maybe you are purchasing prohibited things for yourselves and your children. <clears throat> Maybe you're not spending it on your wives and your children. Maybe you are oppressing them, withholding their rights from them. Maybe you're being stingy and not giving them the money that they deserve. Your money, brothers and sisters, is not actually your money. It is simply a temporary responsibility that is on your shoulders to deal with in the right way. The Prophet ﷺ said, يَتْبَعُ الْمَيِّتَ ثَلَاثَةٌ أَهْلُهُ وَمَالُهُ وَعَمَلُهُ فَيَرْجِعُ ثْنَانِ وَيَبْقَى وَاحِدٌ يَرْجِعُ أَهْلُهُ وَمَالُهُ وَيَبْقَى عَمَلُهُ When someone dies, three things follow that person. Their wealth, their, fam their families, their wealth, and their actions. Two of them go back, but one of them remains. Their wealth and their families go back, but their wealth remain, uh, but their actions remain with them. Question number four. وَعَنْ جِسْمِهِ فِي مَأَبْلَى How they wore their bodies out. How have we worn our bodies out? Some of us, our bodies have become tired. Some of us have reached 30 and started to notice those clicks and that our bodies are not functioning as they used to. Maybe some of us have reached 40 or 50 or 60 or 70. Maybe older, maybe younger. And our bodies are now worn out from our lives in this world. How have we worn out our bodies? Have we worn them out in the obedience of Allah? Have we prayed our salah? Have we made dua? Have we fasted? Have we made the Hajj if we were able to financially and physically? Or have we been not taking care of our bodies? Have we been fueling them and feeding them with prohibitive substances such as smoking and drinking and other intoxicants? Or have we been simply not taking care of our health, feeding our bodies with junk food and unhealthy things? <clears throat> Brothers and sisters, these are <clears throat> Brothers and sisters, maybe you've worn your body out by harming others, by oppressing others, by physically and emotionally harming other people. Maybe that's how some of us have warned, have worn our bodies out. Brothers and sisters, these are four questions that we need to consider. Because life is coming to an end for all of us, sooner or later, and none of us know when it is. These are four questions that we all need to consider and that we need to bring ourselves to account regarding before the Most High brings, ourselves, brings us to account for them. The great companion and caliph of Islam, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu said, Hasibu anfusakum qabla an tuhasabu. Bring yourselves to account before you are brought to account. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Alhamdulillah. Four questions, brothers and sisters. No one's feet will move Yawm al Qiyamah until they are asked about how they spent their life, the knowledge that they had, and what they did with that knowledge, how they earned their money, and what they spent it on, and how they wore their bodies out. Brothers and sisters, these are all questions that we should ask ourselves. And when we do ask ourselves, 
we might find that some of us have fallen short in regards to these four questions. If you found that you've fallen short and that we have fallen short, then praise Allah. Say Alhamdulillah. Praise Allah because you are still alive and you still have an opportunity to rectify your situation and turn, and turn it around for the better. Fudayl ibn Iyab, rahimahullah, the great scholar, the great imam of the Salaf, he said to a man, Kam atat alik? He said, How old are you? And the man said, Situna sana. He said, I'm 60 years old. Fudayl ibn Iyab rahimahullah, said to him, For 60 years you have been traveling towards your Lord, Watushik and Tablo, and you are close to arriving. You're close to reaching your Lord. The man then said, Inna lillahi. وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ He said to Allah, we belong and to him we will return. Fudayl ibn Iyadi said to him, do you know what you're saying? And the man said, فَسِّرْهُ يَا أَبَا Ali." He said, explain what it means. He said, it means that you are a servant of Allah and that you are going back to him. And if you know that you are a slave and servant of Allah and that you are going back to Him, فَلْيَعْلَمْ بِأَنَّهُ مَوْقُوفٌ Know that, that if that person knows that, then know that you are going to be stopped and you are going to be made to stand. And whoever knows that they are going to be stopped and made to stand, then they should know that they are going to be questioned and they, they are responsible for what they've done in this life. And whoever knows that they are going to be questioned and that they are responsible for the things that they did in their life. Prepare answers for the questions. Prepare answers for the questions. The man said to Fudayl, He said, what am I going to do? Fudayl ibn Yadi said to him, Rahimahullah, he said, Yasira. He said, It's easy. He said, Tuhsinu, Tuhsinu fi ma baqi, yughfaru laka ma qad mada. He said, Do good in what remains in your life. He said, Do good, what goods? He said, Do good in what remains of your life, and Allah will forgive you your past. For in naka in asatta. He said, but if you continue to do good, then you will be brought to account for what for your past and your future sins. So it's easy, brothers and sisters. It's easy. Don't look back because you're not going that way. Forget about what's happened. It's over. Yes, be regretful for the sins that you've done, but don't dwell on them. Don't dwell on them because they're gone now. They're finished. Look forward. And rectify what is rest, what is remaining of your life, whatever that is. Hopefully, in hope that Allah will forgive you and forgive all of us. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us for our sins of the past and to rectify whatever is left from our lives. <clears throat> and to forgive us what is ever remaining of our lives and that we can make the most of what is left of our lives. Brothers and sisters, Subhana Rabbika Rabbil Izzati Amma Yasifun, Wassalamun Alal Mursaleen, Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen.